I'm so glad Jesus lived in me. I'm so glad Jesus lived in me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lived in me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Sing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. A lot of y'all complaining, what y'all should be doing is praying. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Jesus. Somebody said they don't speak English. I got something to say about that. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory. Hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory. Hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Pray to let everybody say amen. 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 You know, when you're dealing with life and you're dealing with people, it's hard. Because everybody wants to be the boss. You have to have order. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, amen, that uh, God is not the author of confusion. So when there's confusion in your home, confusion in your life, confusion anywhere, it's because the devil has stepped in. I just got finished talking to some brothers before I got here. Well, usually I would have been here a little bit earlier. And uh, everybody knows about God, but they ain't walking according to the scripture. And tonight I want to share a little bit with you before the, you know, everything goes on. So that's what we hear. We're not, just not here just to receive, amen, the blessing of the natural, but also the blessing of the spiritual. Come on and say amen. And, and the blessing of the spiritual is this from the word of God is, the book of James says, if we say, if we are hearers of the word, then we ought to be doers of the word. Most of us have accepted the Lord like a whole lot of times. Would you ask those brothers to come on in? Because, you know, we had some discrepancy with last time because there's other things that are going on in the building. So please, we'll ask everybody that's with us to please come in. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that way we'll be uh, obeying the rules of the house. Amen. Amen. Because they, they blessed, allow us to be here, and we don't want anybody to be upset with us. Praise the Lord. So everybody that's with us, please come on in. Praise the Lord. Amen. They don't want us to, you know, go bother the basketball team or anybody else because they already go to churches and everything like that. They already have the pastors and stuff like that. So we, we, we rent it here. This is where we're going to be at. Praise the Lord. We don't want anybody to be upset with us because there are like thousands of churches in the neighborhood and mostly everybody that's in there, they go to church already. So we don't want them mad with us. Okay. Praise the Lord. Is that all right? Amen. Just like they play basketball. They don't want us to go out there and we don't. It's just, it's just order. That's all. It's just order. But anyway, in the book of James, you all right? Pray the Lord. You know, in the book of James, it talks about not being just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And what happens is all of us have a belief in God, whether we heard it from grandma, whether we heard it from grandpa, mama, daddy, or from on the job, somewhere we went to church on our own. But if we're not following Jesus Christ, then we just... We're doing a lot of mockery and a lot of wasting time. So tonight I want to share with y'all the fact that we need to really start paying attention to are we really serving the Lord? Because it's about being born again, meaning not just having a worldly mind, but having a spiritual mind. Amen? Amen. Because we're all, as we see, you look in the mirror, we're getting older. We were babies, but we're babies no more. Amen? And some of us, we want to live here to raise our babies, and we have to pay attention to what the Lord is saying. And if you look, when the Bible said, all of us know John 3, 16, what does it say? For God was, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's listen to that, because we quote it, and we don't really pay attention to what's 
16 says, For God, who is above, so loved the world which is beneath, that he gave his only begotten Son. You know what that's really saying? God manifested himself to show us love because there was no man, there was no woman, there was nobody that was found worthy, amen, to go the debt that we owe God. Like we, I was just talking with some brothers before I got here, we talked about unconditional love. The love is not unconditional because you have to repent. And that fools a lot of people because they, they because we say we love God and we accept Jesus, we quote Romans 10 and 9, a man confess with his mouth and believe in his heart, they shall be saved. And we just go on about our own and continue being the men and women that we were. But Jesus said we have to repent. Then we know that Matthew chapter 5 and 48 says that, amen, that we must be perfect. He said, be ye perfect. And we mostly all, what we say? Ain't nobody perfect. Don't you say that? Ain't nobody perfect. But if Jesus told you to be perfect, then that's a, a goal for us to reach. But you can't reach it by doing what we want to do. We reach it by following the word of God. Praise the Lord. We have to be obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. See, some of us will give money. We'll give our time. We'll give anything. But the Bible says in 1 Samuel 15, about the 21st, the 23rd verse, obedience is better than sacrifice. So if we're not obedient, even though we give, we still lost. The book of James comes to say, because some people contrast the two scriptures, Ephesians 2 and 8, where it says, you're saved by faith, you're saved by grace, not by works, at least no man should, should boast. What it's saying is, it's not your good deeds that's going to save you. But when you accept Jesus and know that Jesus died for you, you start living accordingly, so it's not working for yourself. You're working because the Lord did something for you. Then when we go to the book of James, when it says faith without works is dead, so the person that thinks that they don't supposed to do anything just sit back and say, I'm saved, in retrospect to the person that says, well, I give to the poor, I give this, and I give that. But if you ain't following the spirit of Christ, you're just in your own self-righteousness. Matthew 5 and 20 says, amen, except our righteousness exceeds, go beyond that of the scribes and the Pharisees. They did things. They got tax write-off. They did things. They did things in the community for they people to understand exactly that they were good people, good men, good women. But when it came to Jesus, when they stood right there in front of Jesus' face, they were arguing with Jesus. And Jesus said, I'm the word. I'm the word. What are y'all arguing about? I'm that one that the scriptures was talking about. And they said, well, we, 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 we believe in Moses. We believe in Abraham. Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. If you really was listening to Moses, he said, you'd be listening to me. But you ain't really listening to Moses. You was able to cop out and fool people and make people believe that you was listening to Moses. But if you was really listening to Moses, if you was really listening to the prophets, you'd be listening to me right now. That's somebody saying it. So what's the message that you're saying, Pastor Champion? The message is we got to start become doers of the word. What did I say? Doers of what? The word. Doers of what? The Word, and the Word is Jesus Christ. So that means we have to start trying to be like Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, John 14 and 6. I am the truth, and I am the life. No man, no matter who he is, no matter what he doesn't have or what he does have, no man can come unto the Father but by Jesus. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So this is where we at tonight. A lot of us, Amen. Have gotten become just like the scribes and the Pharisees. I just came from a house where we was talking about the word of God, and everybody had a word. Everybody had their own interpretation. I said, "Hold on a minute." But why not follow the word just like it says, precept upon precept, line upon line, their little and their little. And everybody wants to, you can't be like Jesus if you're not listening to Jesus. If somebody's talking the word, even if you have a discrepancy, somebody got to listen. Somebody say amen. You got to listen. Even if you don't agree, you need to listen so that after you get finished listening, then the other person will respect your point, and then you go into the scripture and show why. It's the way it is. Praise the Lord. We're not going to uh, worry about this is what it's about. It's about the word of God. Most of you that came to get what you want, if you came to get it, it's here so you can get it. But in the meantime, praise the Lord, we got some time. 
We're talking about the Word of God because we don't want you to go away. Amen. We, most of us don't. How many, come on, raise your hand. How many of us don't say we believe in the Lord? Come on, raise your hand. Come on. Most of us done did it, and we did it so many times. And this is what happened with some of the people that I've been talking. We done, yes, but we never sought the Spirit because some people started witnessing. They started doing something. But Jesus said, tarry. That means wait. Sit down. Until you be endowed with power. A lot of us don't have the power. You watch the same people cursing, drinking, smoking, sick, addiction. Can't get along with their wives. Can't get along with their husbands. Can't get along on the job. Can't get along with, with Christians. So far. We can't get along with each other. Because the power is not there. We got the letter. And the letter killeth, but the spirit make up a lot. So we got to start seeking for the spirit. Praise the Lord. Well, I've had problems and arguments with people all over about speaking in tongues. Even if you don't believe in speaking in tongues, they spoke in it, but we need the power of love. Where's the power of love? Where's the power of living? Where's the power of representing Christ? We got people that don't even know Christ that do some good things. Some people don't see him. They don't know nothing about Christ. They don't lie. They don't know nothing about Christ. They don't believe in committing adultery. They don't believe in nothing about Christ. They don't even know Christ. But all of us that know Christ, watch some of us. We, we are out of order. We don't respect one another. We just about our program, our program. But we're supposed to be in the spirit of God, in the spirit of truth, in the spirit of, of oneness. Jesus said, let's be one. Everybody right here. See how we're in one building? This is how we're supposed to be one in the Lord. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is what the teaching of Jesus Christ. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Take this with you. And see, because what happens is most of us, what happens, we become so arrogant in our spirit that we don't want to hear anything. I just remember, and I guess I went through this today, and I go through it a lot, to remind me. This is what we're going. Everybody wants to be mama and daddy. Can you imagine if you got children and grandchildren that want to tell you how to be mama, want to tell you how to be daddy, want to tell you how to be grandma, want to tell you how to be grandpa. That don't, no, you can't right now. Praise the Lord. You know what I mean? This is, a, this, is, this is what I'm talking about. Order. We can't let, see, a lot of times we let spirits, we, we've, been, we, we've been drinking, if we've been doing this, or we're doing that, or just the, the opposite, the opposing spirit, amen, comes the contrary. We're here for order. We're not here just to mock time. The, the brothers are being nice, they give us up, but they want, they want you to know about Jesus too. That's what the brother, Pastor Cameron, been talking to you about. He's been talking to you about Jesus. And I know sometimes it goes one ear and out the other. So what I want to reiterate, if we do let it go in one ear and out the other, do you know that's what hell is about? Like some people say, unconditional love. Why is there a hell if there's unconditional love? There would be no hell because nothing you would do would matter. It does matter. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it talks about being effeminate, it talks about being homo, it talks about being adulterous, it talks about being a liar, it talks about being a thief, it talks about being outside of Christ. In fact, the question, the question comes in that chapter is, know you not that the ungodly shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So that right there, that's a condition. That means you have to become godly, not ungodly. So just to say, oh yes, I believe in Jesus, and then do whatever we want to do, that's not showing that we believe in Jesus. And every man, all the men, raise your hand. All the men, every man, no matter what your culture is, no matter what your language is, you are responsible for being the image of God. And every woman, women, raise your hand. Y'all are responsible for helping the men to carry on the agenda of God. But what has happened, like the book of Proverbs says, we've gone our own way. We haven't sought for the wisdom of God. We've gone for the wisdom of the world. Amen? So in order for us to do better, we have to start obeying God's word. That's the, the key. Obeying God's word. Somebody say, obeying God's word. And God's word is Jesus. Now it's love. Because that's the first thing you start, people say to you when you talk about the love. Well, where's the love, Pastor Champion? The love is the same thing I just showed a brother a few minutes ago. The love is just like a parent. Because y'all think love means you can walk all over your parents, huh? I walk all over my God. They love me. I can do what I want. That's how people do God. I can do what I want because God loves me. No. No. Revelation says in the books, first of all, it says the dead, all the dead came.
came out of the grave. All the dead. From out of the sea, out of the land, everywhere. And it said the books were open. That means to show everything that we said and everything we've done is on record. Then it said another book was open. The book of life. And whoever's name was not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And we, we share this with you because the love of God is in us. It don't cost, it don't, we're not charging you nothing for that. Because some folk that went to church and said, oh, we go to church, they charge us. So you're not being charged for this. This is something that we share with you for free. Young and old. And I can look over some of you like Ezekiel. He told them, don't be afraid of their faces. Some of them would be rebellious. Some of them wouldn't want to hear. But guess what? It's just like going to court. When you stand up before the judge and the judge say, are you innocent or guilty? You say, I don't, I, I don't want to hear none of your excuses. I ask you one question. Are you innocent or guilty? When you stand up before God, that's all God wants to do. He's not going to, God got all the reasons why you did what, he, what you've done. He just wants you to know. Are you innocent or are you guilty? Somebody say amen. 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 We can make go a little bit further. But in the book of James, it says, Be you doers of the word and not hearers only. It's not wise just to hear instruction. It's not wise just to hear that you're supposed to stop at the stop sign. It's not wise that you're supposed to stop for pedestrian and just hear it and don't do it because you're going to run somebody over. You can call the accident. Somebody say amen. And it's the same thing with God. When God sends a word to tell you to stop something, it's not to hurt you. It's not to harm you. It's to put order back into your life. Come on, say amen. Because the scripture says in Romans 3 and 23, we were born in sin. Now some of us believe that we were born righteous. But we were not born righteous. You hear the call of God and God calls you to righteousness. And this might be a little hard for some of us, but it's time for us, amen, to step in, not just milk, but some of us need some meat. Even the baby, they start mixing the, the food to get the baby what? Start getting them ready for solid food. Is that right? You can't stay on milk all day. All day. Some of us are, 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 are almost at, at we we older, we mature, and we've been on milk too long. Come on, say amen. We need to get ourselves together and start paying attention because we're getting closer, amen, to our eternal home. Amen. Nobody, amen, knows the day that God is going to say, okay, it's enough. I had enough. Amen. We see funerals every day. We're dying every day. People are getting shot. They're getting killed. They're dying by this and they're dying by that. And Hebrews 9, 27 says we all have an appointment with death. No matter how we die, we're going to leave here. Come on, say amen. But after you die, then the judgment. So it, it would be, the blood would be on my hands if I didn't tell you that Jesus said you got to repent. The blood would be on my hands if I told you that you can just do whatever you want to do. There's no condition in God. Amen. I can just do what I want. I love Jesus. Amen. But where's your sign? James said, you show me your faith with no works. And I'll show you my faith with works. I'm serving the Lord. I'm doing this for the Lord. But make sure you keep Christ in front, not because you want to do it, not because I want to do it, not because it's good for Pastor Jeff, but I got to get on my knees and say, God, lead me. Somebody say, God, lead me. That's what you want to do. You want to ask God to lead you. You don't want to just be led by yourself because if you do, you let the Satan take control and he's the God of this world. We get ready to close this up. But in my closing remarks, I want to leave this word with you. God, help me to do what you say. Somebody say, God, help me to do what you say. Because you need to pray and ask God to help you do what he wants you to do because you can't do it by yourself. If you could have done it by yourself, a lot of us would be better than what we are right now. But we could not do it by ourselves. And some of us, we just want folks to tiptoe around us and act like things are all right when they're not all right. This is a matter of life and death. Somebody say life and death. That's what it's about. It's not about just, you ever, ever let a child be spoiled? And then when they spoil, they grow up, they end up prisoners because nobody really told them right from wrong. Mama, they was mama's baby, daddy's baby. Then when they grow up, they think they can get over on everybody. Then they learn the hard way from the penal system. Come on, say amen. It'll be too late to die and go to hell, ladies and gentlemen. Because some people say, well, I'm going to learn by experience. It's too late to get shot. I, 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 I don't want to learn like that. Amen? I don't want to go to hell and then God say, depart, depart from me, my good, depart from me. You're not a good servant. You never was a good servant. It's too late then because if you cast into hell, it's like going to jail. Once that judge gives you a sentence, 
It's too late to say I'm sorry. You got to do your time. Now, maybe when you get out, you got a chance. But in hell, there ain't no getting out according to the scripture. It says they shall be there weeping and gnashing of the teeth. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. So as you get ready to receive, or uh, uh, I saw Pastor Cameron coming. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to let him say a few words to you, and we're going to carry on the earth. But I want you to be doers of the word. What did I say? Doers of the word. Just walking around saying, I believe in Jesus ain't good enough. Sorry. Some people may not want to hurt your feelings because somebody just asked me a few minutes ago, well, you, you insult people. You insult, you're insulting yourself. You're insulting yourself if you say you believe in Jesus and nobody don't tell you the truth. You, you live in a deceitful life. In fact, that's what the scripture says. He that knows to do the word but won't do the word deceives himself. And that's what happens. We get blanketed with a spirit of deception. We get self-righteous. I'm a, and we don't say we're going to be a Pharisee or scribe, but we become like the scribes and the Pharisees. Can't nobody tell us nothing. And we get among those that cover us up, that we can hide in them, because that's our team. We can, we can do what we want. We all alike. Birds of the same feather flocking together. No, you want to step out in Jesus Christ and let Jesus Christ make you different, because Second Corinthians 6 and 14 says, be not unequally yoked. With unbelievers. I just told the guy, he said, But what about my friends? What about my family? If you're trying to love Christ, first you've got to stand up for Christ. And if you really love your friends and really love your family, you ought to be telling them about Christ. You don't have to be a preacher. It's in you as a woman, you ought to be telling all the daughters in your family about Christ. It's in you as a man, you ought to be telling them about Christ. That's the love. If you can't do it and they shut you down because they drinking, because they smoking, because they doing whatever they're doing, and they making money, they working on a job, they, they busy doing what they're doing. But that's where's the love of God in your life? If you say God is powerful than anything, is that right? Is God more Who believes that God is more powerful than anything? And if you believe that, then you got to let it show. If you don't let it show, then you're making it a lie. Praise the Lord.